Hello and how are you? My name is Mahi Dombak and I welcome you to our 24th lecture of creating a complete inventory management system. As you know, we always do 40 minutes, so I'll go ahead and start our lecture without, without wasting any minute. So, we, you remember in the previous lecture, we were able to accomplish our generator. So in this previous, in this current lecture, we're going to begin from how I stopped that in the previous lecture. So as you can see, I've already launched my project. Let me go ahead and put my emulator here, and let me go ahead and run the what, and run the project. So there we go. Our project is up and running. So if I click here on employees, I'll be able to see all my employees. Okay. Uh, so I want now to be able to edit. You can edit an employee. Now I want to be able to add an employee. Okay, so you remember we created this form yesterday. So we're going to just benchmark from our current form that we already have for the employees, which is this one, this one here. And then we see how we accomplish everything that we've been able to do us to do in this form. All right, so uh we'll begin so with the employee we shall go ahead and collect the first name and the last name so you're going to have the name so you're going to come to a form which is this one so i'm just going to collect the first name okay so you remember we are fetching this from the what from the widget if you've been following so first name there okay so come and put here first name we save so you shall have our first name there so after collecting the first name, the next we're going to collect, we're going to collect our last, the last name. So the last name, we're just going to duplicate this first name, okay? So I'll just simply command, select this one with the space, I press Ctrl D to duplicate. So this is going to be last name, I come and change this one here, and this one here, and come and put here, uh, last name, like this. Alright, so after doing that, so we have our first name and last name. So I can reduce on the space between. Let me make this one 15. Yeah, 15 is okay. So I can make uh, the input here to be the action here to be next. It's like when I put here, I am not seeing the next button. Okay, here it is like a last button. So let me add this one. It's called uh, input action. It should be next like this so someone should be able to access here the what the next button when they're adding so if it's not the last when i'm here for example here after entering this i can simply click on the next so it can take me to the next field all right so we finish the last name so after finishing the last name we proceed uh we come to gender male female other so we come to gender it's going to be uh, it's going to be something like this radio okay status so let me come and copy this status one and uh, status this one here I'm going to cut it okay and then come and put it here uh, before birth date okay so let me come and put it here come and put it here okay so uh, make this one 15 and then this is a uh, form builder radio group so i make sure that i keep the name which is uh, gender which is sex i mean sex so we display it as what as male so collecting male and the display can be male if it's a plain one you can as well just keep it only the value only if you don't want to display a different thing female like this so let's and then maybe other if you want to want to other uh, is there even other gender <laughs> all right so you come here and say this is uh gender okay so you can make it required if you want to i go ahead and save so you can collapse i go back again should be work and up and running so i have male female and other so that is a what our simple uh what uh, gender collecting you can see this one's a radio thing okay so you can pause the video and look at that all right we proceed by the way you can even write the logic of generating this form if you want to 
you can as well write the logic of generating the form itself okay so you proceed uh we collect the phone number so i'm just going to come here and got this something like name this one here copy it then come after the gender and put their phone number okay so i'm going to collect a phone phone number okay so phone number I collect it here phone number and make it maybe minimum of eight or maybe seven maybe minimum of seven and maximum of of 14 so there's a no phone number that can be that has the phone number has to be between that at least 7 and 15 all right so you have their phone number the space between the top here it is too big okay phone number is okay uh -huh. so after collecting the phone number the next thing is phone number number two which is going to be optional so i'll come here and go to this phone number two. i'll come and copy this and then come here and paste then we think this is going to be phone two okay phone number number two okay so come and put this one here and then put here this one phone number two uh, so phone two so this one is optional so i remove this validator and make everything optional i can just remove this requirement and just make it make if you're entering the phone it should be between this and this otherwise you should leave it empty all right so that is our phone number two uh then we go ahead and collect the address of the employee let's go ahead and get this address of the employee so I'll come and copy this and come and put it here here okay address of the employee so i come and put here address okay address and then you can put address and they can put here address like this so i think this is optional okay so after making it optional you go ahead and collect the word the date of birth so come here date of birth we already have the date picker so it's going to be date picker dob we are collecting date of birth like this yeah so you can see how it is implemented you can also make it optional yeah date of birth uh then after we go ahead and collect the photo uh yeah did you put the logic of photo i don't remember <laughs> okay i think we, i think we put the logic of photo let's see uh so the photo okay the photo it is interesting <laughs> let us first finish let us first finish the this information then we shall come to the photo then we're going to come to the photo let's first finish these basic things and then we come to the photo and then the username the username the username the username the username we can keep the email to be the same as username something like that all right so we can maybe the phone number and the username can be the same something like that so let me just put email or username so I'll come and copy this okay let me copy that and then come here and put the username there that they'll use to log in so let me put here 15 and then duplicate this one okay so I'm going to paste this here eh? uh, so here so put username okay username username and come and put here user name so it's going to be required yeah maybe minimum of of three and maximum of 25 so that is a simple user name all right so username is done and then put status whether it's active or not active all right let's go ahead and copy that so it's going to be something like a radio so I'll come and copy our radio which has gender this one here I'm going to copy this radio and go and put in the bottom to change the status of a person so I'll come here in the bottom in the bottom which is DOB and then after username I'm going to put here now the status of a person here after username okay so it's going to be a uh, status status okay status and this is going to be uh, active or uh, inactive or inactive and remove this third one and then come put here 
status like this let me remove these others because i think that's it yeah so status so this is ready it may need some enough space on top here let me make it 25 yeah like this like this so i think that's fine so in the bottom i can remove this i can remove this i think this is okay i think this is okay maybe uh at the end of this button i can put some space at the end of the button i can put some space i don't know yeah i don't know if i can do this i think yeah okay so these other button we've already discussed them in the previous so you can just do the same thing okay so i want to we can remove this a lot we can remove this a lot we just be doing the direct submission okay after successful the validation you can remove this a lot you don't need this thing of keep on asking someone unless something is very crucial okay so um what are you doing here when someone press this button i'll i remove this this one we're using it for testing we are supposed to remove the other side okay so i validate I make sure that the form is validated. This is how I validate. If it fails, I return back. If it succeeds, I call the submit. Okay. So I can put here maybe utils and say the toast and say toast and say maybe submitting. Let me return here. So that is the submitting time. Okay. So that is it. So that is it. That is it. That is it. That is it. All right. So uh, yeah, that is it. I think that's all. We are going to come back for the picture eh? but that's all so let's go back and and try so here we go i can edit even this exist one let's first add so you see here we go so it's adding uh come here say uh john okay maybe let me put it here oh my god something's not right um let me see They're saying what? Mm -hmm. It is not accepting the keyboard. Right, let me try to restart the app. So employees add employee so come here and put peter so i can rub now peter uh joel is mail put his phone number so seven eight three two zero four six six five uh the second phone number is optional kasese uganda and date of birth select the date of birth so you can put the limit like date of birth the last one should be today and then I put the username uh, JP1. Eh? How did he call it? Peter Joel. Okay. PJ1. Uh -huh. And is active. So I can click on submit to see. Uh, phone number two is, is required. Okay. Phone number two. Let me make it optional. Like this. Save. So when you click on submit, okay, let me just. All right, so let's try to submit. So you see, it is showing submitting a lot. All right, so let's go ahead and now work on the logic of submitting. So on the logic of submitting is going to be, it's going to be what? It's going to be, uh, we will submit. Okay, so I'll go ahead and show the what and show the loader and after the, after successful validation and clear the error, make it empty and then I go ahead and create my response. Okay, so it's going to be response and then say HTTP API stroke the endpoint. So since I already have uh, the model here, okay, since I already have the model, I can just simply say uh, stroke endpoint, I can just simply put here. 
I know I can access this endpoint, so I can put maybe widget dot item dot endpoint. I don't know if I can access through this. Okay, maybe I have to just put the mod itself. Okay, I have to put the mod itself. Okay, this one here. I think that's right. Let's try. Go ahead. Let's go ahead and check in our API for a submitting employees. So in our API, we're submitting employees is here, and then you have your create. So employees are submitting them to user to API stroke user. So I hope uh, likewise see our endpoint is stroke user. So I can just simply put API and then put the other API and then say put stroke user like this. You get it? Eh? So I get whatever is I get whatever is in the widget item and then I convert it to JSON. And then I hide my loader. So you see, I convert whatever is in the loader, I mean the widget item. I convert it to JSON. Remember here when it is changing, we, we update it. Eh? And then after converting it to JSON, after converting it to JSON, I go ahead and submit it. And you remember how we did this response model, all these things. Okay, so I don't need to explain it because I've explained them everything here step by step in the previous videos. So you see the advantages of creating such a, such a thing. Like submitting, it's not now painful. It is just one single line and you have everything submitted. Can you see? That is so beautiful. So you can see that. It's still posted. So, but when you did it, it was painful. But right now we are just enjoying. By just, so I just simply, I'm not changing almost everything here. I just check if the error is zero, I put the message. If the error is successful, I submit the message. If it's successful, I can just simply put here whatever has come in the what in the response response dot what dot message like this and I post it. You see? So you can look at that. So let's go ahead and try submit. Uh -huh, there's an error, integrity constraint. Uh -huh. There's an error. What are they saying? Column username cannot be null. Eh? Username cannot be null. So username did we did not did we collect username? Username, 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 PJ123. Let me see. Username, PJ123. So username is not being collected. Eh? Hey, password now. Column. Username cannot be null. Mm-hmm. Ah yeah, so Username, username, username is being rejected. Okay, let's see. Password is okay. So we did not even put the field of collecting the password. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So the error is there. Constraint. Column, integrity, column, username cannot be none. All right, let's see what we have in the username. Okay. So I think we can be able, at least we can be able to see the error. So let us see what we have in username. So let me let me just return here, return. Okay, and then just simply do like a print, and then do a widget, and then item dot username. Let's see what you're setting for username. Okay, come here. Let's try to submit pg one. I think that's okay. That's okay. Let's try to convert this one to JSON. To JSON. I think maybe it's password that is causing the error. So to JSON, you see username is there, password is empty. Let's try to check, put something in password. Let's see how we did that logic in backend. Well, let's see what we are we have here in the create. Uh, we are sending the username. Maybe the username is too short. Huh? Yeah, maybe the username is too short. Maybe also the password is required. Let's try to engineer it here and put the username and put something that's a little bit long. Uh, test user one and then password. We make it password one. Test password one. I, I can maybe say password. 
password one okay password one okay let's say maybe four three two one something like that all right so let's save so here i'm resetting the username to that submit uh-huh so the error remain call the username cannot be null okay let's see let's see let's see now what if we try to send using the postman unauthenticated mm -hmm. okay let's go to our api and we see what is not right postman postman here you have data all right all right let's see let's see let's see. let's go to our, to our api and see what could be causing that Go to the API. Go to our mode of create. Post. Postman. We have here my update. I think. Yeah. Okay, my update. Uh, so it is facing everything I think I think everything is all right let's try let's try and see let's send the username here and what is causing that but you're going to figure it definitely username let's see what you're having in JSON print let json submit i see her username is there well written okay call them username let us see if other things are being collected so other things are collected i see everything is being collected uh, the name values so only the username is being skipped all right i think there is a problem here let's see why username is being skipped api okay i think okay i get the point register it has its own what it has its own ah no this is the model the create model so get user Let's try to send to check something. Let's try to do this. Let's try to do the same as email. I think email standard is being taken as username. Let's try to submit. Yeah, it's email. <laughs> so let's just um, collect the email and username. So So here we're collecting the, the email. Let's just collect the email instead. Okay, email. So you shall have email. So when you're collecting this, we shall just be keeping username to be the same as the email address like this. 
so you come here and collect email so i can put here email address something like that uh -huh. so after doing that after doing that uh -huh, let's make this validate and make sure it's a valid email email like this just validate you just add that one there all right so you shall make sure that you're collecting an email address yeah email address of that user uh so after doing that uh so after doing that the next thing you're going to maybe collect the password yeah, password of a password you can leave it right now we can because someone will be able to change their own password so maybe you can put here some hint and say maybe text and say default password is 4321 like this okay default password is 4321 you give just that hint and give it maybe some color Is some color red yeah something like that just simple all right all right all right okay so yeah i think now we're good so when you submit enter valid password email so make i say test user one at gmail.com okay submit so you see credit account credit successfully let's try to submit again you see it refuses because there's a person with already, who already has the same email so i do like this too try to submit account credit successfully so on the successfully i want it to go back i want the system to pop okay so where is this after successful here i just pop here okay uh navigator navigator dot what dot pop like this i make sure that they just go back after successful registration say so it is error come here and that you can make better errors that looks much more clean so it has been registered successfully so when you refresh like here you see the users are here they've come they've been registered successfully all right so now did you work on the deletion of users let's see on our end point we did not okay, that one will be worked up in the next session so i can go ahead and edit for example edit this user so when I click on edit, everything is being fed there automatically. Apart from sex, let's see why. So I can be able to change. For example, I put this full stop and see if update is working. So uh, constraint password cannot be null. Uh, password cannot be null. Password cannot be null. Uh, so how are we going to fix that? Uh, password cannot be null so when you're trying to change so what i'm going to add here in our logic here in our logic update where is this yeah in the logic of update okay i want to add something like if something is not set it should be skipped okay so you see here when you're setting the keys eh I'm going to check if something is not in null and it is empty, it should be skipped. So I'm just simply going to add this one. If is equal to null, it should be skipped. If if uh, is empty, it should be skipped. You see? So there are the two things. Because every time password is trying to be reset and it is not there. So it, it keeps on throwing an error. So this is what we need. You say if it is null, it should be skipped. If it is empty, it should be skipped. I don't know whether I have something like that again, so I can put this. Let me see. I think that's it. Only place. Yeah. So you need this. Just add it there. I think if something is null, it should be skipped. If a key is null, it should be skipped. If a key is empty, it should be skipped. Eh? Does it need to skip an empty key? 
I don't know. I don't know. Let's uh yeah, let's just do that. Uh let's just go ahead and push now this. Let me go ahead and pull. So I push it to my GitHub. I come to my hosting and pull. I don't know which one I'm using exactly. This one needs no space. Which am I using? Hope it's this one. I pull. Now I should be able to edit. Submit. You see, it is successful now. So I can come here and change the name. Submit. It is up when I refresh here two times. It shows it has updated. That is so nice. Uh, so if I want it maybe to be updated automatically. So here after the success or maybe even before the success here, before it closes the load, I can go ahead and get and update this one. Eh? So I just say dot what dot get dot get online items. So I just await here. So the next time we go back, it is updating. So now, if we want this one to be automatically refreshing, so I'll come to our employees list. Employees list here. Uh, which is this one here when I'm coming here to add I'll just wait I wait for it I wait okay I put here I wait it does a synchronous so when it finishes I go ahead and do my init I go ahead and call my init so it will wait for this one to finish when it finishes it refreshes this page okay so let's do the same also to the to the create Okay, so in the crate here, I put a wait, and then it finishes. I just do like dot in it like this. So it will make sure that when I finish editing, it changes this one. So example, let me come here to edit. I just come here and put some here like this. Put female. So it's, let us see why it is not doing uh, active. Yeah, it is. See, it updates automatically. It comes back and updates it. Let us see why it is not doing the sex thing. Why it's not doing that radio. Why it's not keeping the radio state of sex. Let's come here to gender. Gender, 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 gender. Email. I mean employee. And come here to gender. So. Okay, see here we're doing the mistake here. Yeah? We are keeping it in gender. This is a very bad mistake. It's supposed to be kept in sex like this. Yeah, now I think it's not fine. Put your female, submit. It is okay. I come here to edit. You see, it keeps it as female. So that is uh, a good, very good, nice crude. Very nice crude that is even syncing with what? With internet. That is very, very nice. All right, so let's go ahead. So I've finished update edit. Uh, what should we do next? We should we do the view. Uh, let me see our time that you have. Uh, should we do the view? Maybe the view can leave it for now. We can. We shall come back for these views when you are mastering the whole application. Uh, so, or should just do the view right now. Okay, we shall come back for the view later. If you want to see the details, just come be like editing and be able to see the employees' details. We shall come back for the view later when you are doing the mastering of the application. All right, so that is a complete crude of what of uh, an employee. And now let's let me show you now how fast you can be. Let us now do the crude of uh, employees done. Employees, you can add your employees. You can add your financial periods. Let's go to the store categories. Let's do the store categories right now. 
oh one more thing that we didn't do adding the picture adding the picture adding the picture i think that one shall do in the next video let's finish that let's just finish this uh let's first finish this adding the categories and then the next video shall come back and add the pictures now so first things first let's add the categories so this is what so category mode. so it's going to be we're going to first begin by creating a so category model how do you create our models we just simply come here and do go to our generator that's my generator come and click here new generator i'm going to call it stock stock category 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 make sure that you keep the same like it should be like almost the same category model like this so if i mean to if i want to do to identify it as model something like that uh so where is the table uh it is here stock categories not subcategories stock categories so after doing that let's go ahead and uh, and get the stock category endpoint here which is this one which is this one the end point of creating i mean the end point of listing it is this one store category so i come and put it here store category like this and then after i create it so after creating it this is our store category okay i go ahead and generate it by just simply clicking on generate model so our model is over so I just simply come and copy the store category model so i hope you see how fast we can be come here come to our models right click new file store category mode that i created there come and do control a control a control v i paste there no any error just press control alt and l so my code can be uh, arranged you see store category everything is perfect without any error so after doing that now the next thing is uh i'm going to do what i'm going now to add the store categories here on our listing so i'll come here to our menu route our main menu i just come here and copy this copy this guy and paste it so i'm going to call this one what let me put maybe here divider put a some divider divider and create here maybe some divider and then i'm going to call this one store categories like this Right, so after doing that i'm going to create now the store categories what store categories screen uh list screen so i'll just simply come here and press here control p i'm in control and click on employees screen because i'm going to benchmark from it okay so i come here this is employees i'm going to create a new uh new what new new folder for store categories so i come right click on screen new screen called it stock underscore categories like this after doing that i'll come here and get this employees list okay because the most lists that we almost the same i mean that has almost our latest changes copy that employees list come and paste it here so i come to employees list control c control c come and paste it here employees i mean store categories control v and then i come and copy this one to stock stock categories or oh, store category cut store categories store categories i put in in plural so it can be like a, a list or a list of what of store categories store categories screen come there and copy it control enter so you have here store categories what store category screen then come here to employees screen I select this word employee screen this is the file that i've just copied and pasted here okay press this okay i just select it all control f alt and enter and paste there so it should be store categories screen that should be the screen here so i can just simply come and change here the title and change it here to stock categories like this so after doing that let me go ahead and do let me go ahead and now call this one okay let me go ahead and re, and call this stock category screen so i'll come here to a main menu main menu main route this one here i come and paste this one as stock category screen press alt and enter so it is there stock category screen so there it is 
So after doing that, I'll come ahead. I'll go ahead and click on this store category screen. You see, uh, this is a store category screen, but we've not put there the mode of store category screen. So let's begin. Let's finish by putting there the mode at least of store category screen. So I press Ctrl and click here, and we see if it can at least list them. Okay, so I'll come here and put here stock stock category model. That's going to be our items. So category model. I'll just come here and change this one to stock category get items like this. So I'll come here to where there is this. I can first comment this one for now. That of creating. Uh where is another one? I think okay, so yeah, that's it. So I think that's it. That's it. Yep. So I save, click on store categories. You see, there is no store categories because I've not added here. So here should be there is no stock categories found because literally true, there is no store categories because I've not added any. All right. So in the next lecture, we are going to begin by adding store categories and also work on the image uploading from the mobile phone or to the server. That's what you're going to do in the what in the next lecture. So, but you see now how it is very simple to create something, a list that is syncing with the server, that has all that back-end logic, that checks even for the offline capabilities by just generating a, a model. Instead of you creating these things by yourself, they are generated. Now assume that you have like a project which has like 20 models. You don't need to repeat yourself. Let's say you have a project which has like 100 models. You just click a list, I mean generate, and then generate it for you. And you'll find that even in your next project, you just copy that thing and reuse it there. You will not repeat yourself and it will just escalate your what? Your productivity. All right, that's it for today. In the next lecture, we're going to take it from there. We're going to work on now the stock categories and then also work on the image uploading. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel so you can always be updated with what we do. Thank you for being part of this lecture at this point. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.